Good day dear students. Today we are going to learn a poem Crossing the Bar by Alfred Lord Tennyson. To understand the poem we must understand the poet. He was an English poet. He was the poet laureate during Victorian era. Now what is Victorian era? It's a time when England was ruled by Queen Victoria. And then wondering what is poet laureate? Poet laureate means a poet will be appointed by the, by the Queen as a member of the royal household. He succeeded William Wordsworth. You remember William Wordsworth? Daffodils? Right. After William Wordsworth, Lord Tennyson was a poet laureate. Now, Lord Tennyson was so good with his words that many of his phrases have become common day phrases. For example, regarding the soldiers he has said, There's not to reason why, there's but to do or die. So beautiful it is, no? Regarding the life he has said, The old order changeth, yielding to the new. Yes, old people must go away and the new persons must come in. Like that, there are many other beautiful verses. It's there in your workbook. Learn it. It's useful for you to write in essays. I told you, you have to start with a hook. You may get good essays with good quotes. Now, this Lord Tennyson wrote this poem in the year 1889. He was very old by then already. He wrote this poem while on a voyage in the sea. He became sick. It was a near-death experience for him. He survived the disease, but that experience made him write this poem. It was written in 20 minutes. You can imagine what a genius he is. And maybe because his younger son Lionel was also dead by that time. Lionel was returning from India and on the way he died during the voyage and they gave him a water burial. That must also might have made him sad. And the, he liked this poem so much that he said that this poem crossing the bar, bar must be the final poem in all his published work. So it's kept it always, they always put crossing the bar as the last poem of his collections. Now so far we understood the backdrop of the poem, why the poet, how the poet came to write about it. Now the first important point, you should understand what crossing the bar is. Bar means sandbar. Sandbar is the ridge of sand that is formed by the waves when a river and two water bodies are connected. Here, Tennyson is speaking about the uh, river and sea connection. And he is symbolizing the river as his life, his living, his life, and sea as his life after death. Now, the sandbar, that is a barrier between life and death. Still, I don't know whether you all have understood what the meaning of crossing the bar is. Try to look into the video. See how the boat is going above the turbulent waves and going to the other side. So it is like moving from life to death. He want that movement to be smooth. That's what he's going he's telling in this short form. Let us watch the video. Watch the video. Thus, in this form, Tennyson uses sandbar as a metaphor for death. 
crossing the bar is the metaphor for dying a uh, then this crossing the bar is a meditation a metaphorical meditation of death a final goodbye to a well lived life it shows us internal contentment after living a beautiful life i'm sure this poem must have given solace to many a patient who died of covid-19 pandemic it's have only a near death experience person can understand the depth of this poem i don't know how many of you all have had it i've had it when i went into that machine for the whole body scan it's like getting into the coffin and there it will be very noisy we feel that angels and devils are knocking at us from all sides we don't know what is going to happen we don't know what is going to be the result yes it it really changed my attitude so it's uh, the when a person experiences such a condition a near death experience will definitely change the attitude of that person now let's come to the poem you take page 16 of your textbook crossing the bar fifth poem ready take out your notebook take a pen be ready to put take down the notes okay shall i start okay first just have a glance of the poem you see four line four line four lined four stanzas that's called quatrain quatrain means four line stanzas so the poem is made up of four quatrains now let us look into the rhyme scheme of the poem the last word of the first line star give it a the last word of the second line me give it b third line bar star bar a a fourth line c me c b b what's the rhyme scheme a b a b let's check the second stanza also okay asleep a form b deep a asleep deep a a home b form ho b b a b a b so what's the rhyme scheme of the poem a b a b got it now let's move on to the first stanza sunset and evening star and one clear call for me and may there be no morning of the bar when i put out to sea the poet begins by describing the atmosphere sunset and evening star end of the day the poet has also reached almost the end of the life sunset sir sir star sir the repetition of the words figure of speech sibilance s i b i l l a n c e sibilance it's also alliteration sunset and evening star and one clear call for me it is a pointer towards the god factor that's coming later in the poem and it's one clear call means call to heaven here clear call kar kar sir sir alliteration so the poet literally the poet says it's sunset the evening star evening star is actually venus planet venus the evening star has come up and my call the call 
has also come for me. A clear call for me. Symbolically, it means I have become old. It's time my death is imminent. Uh, it's time for me to die and God is already calling out to me and may there be no mourning of the bar mourning here means that groaning sound made when we are suffering like oh, oh that's suffering now here what is making the mourning the waves beating on the sand ridge and when the waves are beating on the sand ridge, who is groaning, who is moaning? Bar is moaning. So here Bar is personified. And may there be no mourning of the Bar when the sand bar is personified. When? When I put out to sea, when I start my journey, that is when I am about to die, may there be no sound at all. May there be no worries and anxieties. These groanings are the worry. When do we groan? When we have worries. When we are anxious. When we are anxious about something. So may there be symbolically it means may there be no worries and anxieties. Once more, I'm going through the four lines. Sunset and evening star and one clear call for me. And may there be no morning of the bar when I put out to sea. The literal meaning is, it's evening. The call has come for us to go and sleep. May there be, may there be no morning of the bar. May there be no worry, uh, sound from the sandbar when I stand. May there be no troubles from the sandbar when I put out to sea. Symbolic meaning is. I am old now. It's time for me to die. God is calling me. May, may I be not worried about anything while I am going to die. So here evening stands for death. After evening it is night, darkness, death. I hope the first four lines are clear for you. Hope you have noted down all the figures of speech. Sibilance, sunset, sun, set, star, all the S underlining, alliteration, then clear call alliteration, then the bar personification. One more figure of speech is there. That is enjambment. E N J A M B M E NT enjambment when the meaning of a line goes beyond the end of the line when the meaning of what is being said goes beyond the end of the line to the next line then it is called enjambment there are many instances of enjambment in this form I want you to pick out one on your own okay that is the first assignment that you have so the first answer is over we are going to the Second stanza. But such a tide as moving seems asleep, too full for sound and form. When that which drew out from out the boundless deep turns again home. Let's go through the lines. But such a tide as moving seems asleep. When the ship puts out to the sea, if the tide is full, if it's high tide, it's easy for the ship to move out into the sea. So here the poet says, when he is embarking into the journey, you see when I put out to the sea, the meaning is coming in the next line. But such a tide as moving seems asleep. The tide must seem as though it is sleeping. There shouldn't be much turbulence in the waters. Here, tide is personified. Tide should look as though it is asleep. And when it, it should be too full for sound and form. Sound is caused when the waves beat down. And when the waves beat down, there is a lot of form. Form means, you know, the pipe, pipe thing bubbles. 
that is form now actually the sound and form symbolifies his doubts sound stands for doubt sound has something solid that's why that sound comes doubts doubts has some solid he heard some things that that is why he is having doubts and fears fears are baseless like bubbles bubbles are empty inside it, it means not empty there is air but no solid thing inside so like that fears so sound stands for doubts and form stands for fears so when he gets into the sea he wants the tide to be trouble free without any sound and form and then he says how what is dying when he when he dies and he says when that here that stands for water underline that and on top of it you write water drew out water is coming out how is water coming out like it's the process of evaporation that is being set you all have learnt it the water is coming out as vapors and then what is happening if from where is it coming out from the boundless deep boundless deep stands for sea underline boundless deep and write on the top sea so water is coming out as vapors from the sea forming clouds coming down as rain falling on the rivers and the rivers from there the rivers are taking the waters back to the ocean the water which went out from the ocean is coming back to the ocean like that he came from heaven and he was sure that he is going back to heaven he is reuniting with god once more let me go through it but such a tide as moving seems asleep too full for sound and form what what is his doubts and fears you know that was a time when the theory of evolution was put forward by charles darwin it shook the very foundations of the religion because until then humans were basking in the glory of the knowledge that god molded man out of dust and gave his own breath god's breath to man and gave him life and so he was just almost like god and suddenly this man is coming up and saying you are you have come out from a monkey your ancestor is a monkey it was devastating suddenly to say my ancestor my great 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 grandfather was a monkey it was it was not acceptable to the human kind he did not want to have any uh, he he did not want to shake his faith his strong faith in god he believed that he came from god and he is going from god he was not going to believe charles darwin at all now i know you all may not agree with me but even i am happy to believe that i came from god okay yours your belief is yours my belief is mine but i will learn charles darwin or uh, theory also i accept that also but this is faith my faith anyway let's come back to the poem so when he so you understood the meaning of doubts and what the what are the doubts and fears he had so he says i don't want to have any doubts and fears i am sure i am going to be reunited from where i came you have to be very sure about the literal meaning and the symbolic meaning let me move on to the next one here the figures of speech are personification of the tide i hope you all have uh, marked it then in the second line full form form f f f what is the figure of speech alliteration right so he is here home stands for where i came from that is i am going to be born again in heaven and i am returning to heaven i am going to be reunited with god shall we go on, go on to the next stanza okay shall we move on to the third stanza twilight and evening bell and after that the dark 
and may there be no sadness or farewell when I embark. Twilight see the poet began with describing the atmosphere when it was sunset. Now it's twilight. The sun has already set. Twilight means the starlit sky. Twilight and evening bell. Evening bell is see in the churches the evening bell is rung for us to say the prayers. For the Christians to say the prayers. So that is the evening bell. After evening bell what comes? Darkness. Darkness is death. And after that the darkness. Here, the eve twilight signifies his advanced age, and evening bell, the tolling of the bell, signifies that it is time for him to die, and then it is darkness. That is death. And may there be no sadness or farewell. This is ambiguous. Ambiguous here is who is saying farewell? The poet is saying farewell. The poet is dying. So here the sadness may be the sadness of the poet because he is leaving this world, he is leaving all the loved ones behind or maybe the sadness of the people around him. The people around him may be sad that the poet is dying. So he is telling may there be no sadness. Neither the poet nor the people around should feel sad when I embark, when I am going to the my journey to the other world that is when I am dying nobody should feel sad here he describes death as not something cruel he has accepted the reality that death is inevitable and he is getting ready to die he is he wants the dying to happen so calmly that there will be no uh, disturbances at all from any side. Everybody should bid him a happy farewell. Let's begin with the fourth stanza. For though from out are born of time and place, the flood may bear me far. I hope to see my pilot face to face when I have crossed the bar. From, for though from out are born, born means boundary, there is uh, the time and place limited in the earth. That is from when I am carried away from this finite world that is the earth by the flood. Flood here stands for sea, underline flood and write on the top sea. When the sea carries me away very far, I am confident. The poet is confident to face the life after death. Why is he confident? It's given in the next two lines. I hope to see my pilot face to face. Here, pilot stands for God. It's a metaphor for God. I hope to see my pilot face to face. He expects to be reunited with God. When I have crossed the bar. Here, crossed. The use of crossed is interesting. It may be simply that he is crossing the bar or the critics have speculated that it may be a reference to Christ who has died in the cross. Now here, the Tennyson later explained that the pilot was with him throughout his life. But he was not able to see him because of the darkness. And he was there to guide him throughout his life. Here, it's very interesting. He, he had uh, strange religious ideas. You see, Tennyson says when he dies, he will directly get reunited with God. He was 100% sure he was going to heaven. He was a Christian. So for Christians, there is this uh, point of hell, purgatory, all those things are, but for Tennyson, all those things never existed. For him, he dies, he straight away goes to heaven. He was confident about it. Now, it's an interesting thing I heard recently. There are three heavens. One heaven is the sky. 
that is when we are elated when we are very happy we we rise ourselves to that that heaven that is first heaven then there is a second heaven that is a heaven for devils but hell for us so devils are there with this mosquito bat like thing you know after that comes the third heaven that is where god dwells so when we send our prayers it has to pass this hell and go to heaven so if we are, our prayers are not sincere if we it's just lip service if we are not focused in our prayer the, the devils will catch it with the mosquito bat so it must be very sincere only then it will directly reach the heaven I am just I am just uh, telling what I heard. It may be true, may not be true. I don't know. Okay, jokes apart. Let us come back to Tennyson. Tennyson was very confident that after death, this death was his reunion with God, and he is going back to the place from where he came. So here, without he wanted to have this process of dying. calmly gently without any fear he was assured that what comes next is meeting with god now the themes of the poem he is speaking about tennyson is speaking about a grief free farewell grief free farewell means farewell without any sadness that can be the you have to write the summary but you have to say uh, give more yeah. stress on that part ambiguous ambiguity then you have courage to face the death that is another thing there are many other themes that refer to the workbook uh, read it well i am giving you some questions in the google classroom please answer those questions today itself okay i hope you all have understood the poem well Uh, it's the uh, uh, you can even say this is euphemism this poem in this poem the main thing is euphemism euphemism means something harsh is expressed in a mild way death is not something very pleasant but he has expressed death in a very mild way one clear call that one clear call you put it in bracket and write there euphemism that clear call is call for death he has put it in a very mild way not in a fearful way that's all thank you